Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Maddie and I just finished up the second year of my PhD in chemical engineering at Montana State University and I was one of the 2022-2023 NSF GRFP honorable mentions and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the research proposal portion of the um, like proposal package. I already made a video about my personal statement. I read through my personal statement, gave some comments about what the reviewers did and did not like about it. And I also uh, gave some just general personal statement tip, writing tips. And today I wanted to talk, like I said, more about the research proposal part. So for the GRFP, you get two pages to write your um, personal, or sorry, your research statement. Two pages, including references. And so uh, it's, it's tight, it's very short. You gotta be very concise and say what you wanna say and convey it. Um, and it's difficult to do. So I'm not actually going to read my statement like I did in my last video. If you do wanna hear my statement and read through it, I think it should probably be, I guess I don't know if they post the honorable mention essays. Um, but if you do really wanna see that, I guess just like leave it in the comments and I can make another video where I actually read through it. But for some general tips for writing a research proposal, uh, specifically like the research part, number one, include figures of some sort to break up the text. Um, this is actually one of the negative comments that I got was the research document included large blocks of text that could be organized slash broken up through formatting or use of figures to aid the reader. Um, and then the comment goes on to say, but the main concern with the proposed activities is that there might be incremental advance over existing activities. Anyway, um, yes, include figures, definitely a flow chart of like the, the parts of the project, especially if you, if this is like a new project that you have no other like background figures that you can include. That is an easy one that actually is helpful to see. It's kind of difficult because the GRFP is so short and some other research proposals are much longer. Like the ones that I've written for NASA are like five to six pages, which sometimes you're like, how am I gonna fill that many pages? But with GRFP, it's quite short. So anyway, you wanna make sure that your figures actually are worth the space. So with a flow chart, it can be really nice to see the like, obviously the flow and the this is happening, then this is happening, this is happening of your research proposal because it acts really nicely as like a summary figure and it also conveys like a timeline. And if you could, you could mark actual timelines. So like year one, X, Y, Z, which is gonna go into X, Y, Z, and then starting in year two from this X, Y, Z kind of idea. So like a timeline and a flow chart in one would probably be really helpful um, in case you don't already have existing figures. If it's um, like a proposal that builds off of something you've done previously, it could be really helpful to include a figure from your prior work because that shows that you have data and that you kind of know what you're doing. Um, but anyway, just be sure that you use figures. It kind of depends on the required formatting of the proposal if they need to be like in line. So like the way that I usually do mine is the text fully breaks and then I put in the figure centered. Um, I just think it looks nicer, but if you are on a formatting page crunch, you can put them just like in the text, like off to the right or left or something like that, because that does take up less space. Um, but definitely, definitely, definitely use figures. Big one. Another thing for the research proposal is you want to be as specific as you possibly can. Um, specifically when it comes to things that are expensive <laughs> or unique to your project. So something that we have in, at MSU, we have the Center for Biofilm Engineering, and within that we have a lot of really cool analytical equipment, especially microscopes. And so I make sure that if I'm writing a a proposal that includes imaging, which most of my proposals do, I will specifically say that we have XYZ instruments. So we have like a Leica SP5 upright confocal scanning light laser mic microscope. Um, and I will say it very bluntly like that, um, especially since I think for our Raman spectroscope, I wanna say, it's like the only one at a public institution in the U US. So you wanna say like, and you can call that specifically out in your proposal. Um, and then you also wanna be sure that you can call out things that you're familiar with already. So like I work with a CDC reactor, it's a common way to grow biofilms. And in a research proposal, I can like write in using a CDC reactor, which I have experience with from, or which I have been using in research for 
five years, four years, four years now. Um, like kind of call that out, call out your strengths and the fact that you are familiar with these techniques because it's more likely that you're gonna get funded if you already know what you're doing because you're not gonna be wasting money by wasting time. Like you're not gonna have to go through all this training which costs money and takes time. Like you're gonna be ready to hit the ground running which is a big deal. Um, so definitely be sure to include what you are familiar with. And then another thing that's good to include is just any of the facilities you have at your disposal, like within your university. So again, I call out that the CBE, we have like an in-house biostatistician that sometimes if we need help with statistics, we can go to him. We have um, a dedicated microscopist who is up to date on the latest microscopy techniques and like these things like this. Um, or you could say things specifically that like your advisor is familiar with. So like in my GRFP and um, this is included in my kind of review, I specifically talked about running transcriptomics, which is basically what kind of proteins are being expressed by a cell at a certain time. And I said in my proposal that I am not familiar with transcriptomics, but people within my lab are, um, especially my advisor. And so one of the things that got called out was the applicant will learn new techniques uh, in transcriptomics, but many of the other approaches are already part of the applicant's expertise because I included that I already know this microscopy techniques that I'm gonna be doing. I've already worked with this biofilm reactor for four years. I've shown that I have it. Like I have it, <laughs> I've got it all, I've got all the pieces, they just need to come together and I'm gonna have to have someone help me with this one piece. But it's something that's already within my advisor's expertise and within my lab's expertise. So you just wanna be very explicit in the things that you're already good at and already familiar with. And you also wanna be explicit, and it kind of ties into that exact point, why are you and why is the university you are attending the right place and person to do this research? That is a big thing. Um, you want to be sure like and this ties into the equipment that's available, the expertise that's available, but you need it's not just your research that's being funded. It's also you and your university. So all three of these things need to come together and make sense. The research pro project has to be like interesting and unique and original, not done before, things like that. Like it's gotta be well written and good. You have to show that you're the person to do it, which kind of sometimes comes in in the personal statement, but you can also tie those things into a research statement by saying I'm already trained on X, Y, Z. Um, and then why the university that you're writing or you're attending or whatever is the place for this research to occur. I think all those three things coming together are really, really important. And like I said, you wanna be sure to be as specific as possible when it comes to the techniques used. That can come in with your literature search and like citing different sources. Um, one of the things that I did get dinged for is that I didn't, I didn't put in a lot of specifics about like the water quality and the water and hydrodynamics of the reactor that I do my research in. And one of the people who was doing the review is probably a water quality engineer or a water engineer of some sort. Um, and they they pulled, <laughs> they really did not like the fact that I didn't address those things because I thought it was more important to address other things. Um, but that's just kind of the way that the dice roll. You're never gonna know exactly who is going to be reviewing your application. But just try to be as specific as you can. Um, you can go in with this expectation, it, and this also depends on what kind of proposal you're writing, who you're writing it to. Like, if you're writing to people, if the people reviewing are already gonna be people very familiar with your field, you can kind of skip the really, really basic intros, but you wanna make sure that you're still giving the basics of things that are going on and then diving deeper. And so I gave a little bit more basics on microbiology because I knew chemical engineers were gonna be um, reading my paper or my proposal because I'm going for chemical engineering. Um, and so that's why I skipped out on some of the chemical engineering stuff. And then that actually came back to bite me in the butt a little bit. Um, so that's something I would change. But I think that wraps up all of my like big, big tips for proposal writing. And just like proofread it, have someone else read it, someone um, in your field would be great and then someone who's maybe slightly adjacent to your field or just barely familiar with your research itself 
uh, then you get some like, you get kind of like three levels of feedback. The nitty gritty, the kind of, I kind of know what's going on. And the one who's like, I'm in science and I know how to read scientific writing, but I don't know what you do. And you can take all of those suggestions and kind of wrap them up and hopefully get a really good proposal. So please let me know if you have any specific questions down below in the comments. Um, this is, I guess, part two of my NSF GRFP series. I don't know if I'm going to do another part, but yeah. There's some other, there's some other uh, comments about my research proposal, but most of them are just so specific to what I wrote and I didn't want to read my proposal. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.